vehicle is pitching downrange. Ship ignition. Stage separation confirmed. Lots of excitement. So right here, this is <laughs> rotating and turning <laughs> to guide the booster. And there's that landing gun. So far. We only had about a 5% chance of violation uh, when we started this morning, and that's held. Um, so everything continuing to look really good for launch so far. Uh, the pad itself is getting ready. At the optional T minus 40 second mark, um, that that moment basically uh, was what would allow teams to wait for final checkouts uh, uh, or. 10, 9, 8. Vehicle is pitching down range. All right, 30 seconds into flight, the, the rumbles are still building <laughs> here in the Raptor's <laughs> nest. We're seeing 32 out of 33 Corporate engines system. lit on the Super Heavy right now. Coming up shortly is going to be max Q, that maximum aerodynamic pressure as we go uphill on the vehicle. Max Q. All right, we just passed through max Q, so we're going to continue on up. We still have about a supersonic. minute and 30 seconds until we get to stage separation. Starship now flying faster than the speed of sound. All right, so you got a couple of views. You got some ground trackers in your top camera there. You're looking down from the top of the booster in the bottom left, and then a camera in the top flap of the ship looking back in the bottom right, so getting a couple of different looks as Starship heads uphill. Uh, once we get the hot staging, a lot of things happen all at once simultaneously. We're going to light the engines on the ship, starting with the RVAX first and then the three center sea level engines before we're separated. All of that exhaust gets plumed out the side of the hot stage and then the ship will separate itself. Uh, all but the three center engines with on the, the booster are, gonna are going to shut down. So the booster never stops its thrust while we go through this hot stage maneuver. After that, the booster is going to do its flip, start heading back, and then the ship will be on its own power on its way to space. So that should be coming up in just about 30 seconds from now. As of right now, still looking in like 32 out of 33 Raptors lit on the booster. And we'll start to see those stagger down. They're going to turn off in banks, so you'll see the lights on the bottom left screen of the engines that are active start to to turn off in different groups, and you'll see those three center ones lit. Booster engine cut off. Ship ignition. Stage separation confirmed. Boost back burn start up. Acquisition is Houston. Hot stage confirmed, ship under its own power, booster boosting back. Looks like all 13 are lit. Kate, we got a booster on the way back to the Gulf and a ship on the way to space. Acquisition signal, signal, Stennis. Ship chamber pressures are nominal. Ship power and telemetry nominal. All right, the first stage currently performing the boost back burn. This is expected to last a little over one minute. This propels the booster back toward the coast, taking it to a landing in the waters of the Gulf of Mexico. 
As you can see on your screen in the bottom left-hand corner, uh, we were only using the 13 center engines uh, from, from basically from, from here on. Looks like they're shut down. Heard confirmation there of good boost back burn shutdown. H2 tank pressures are normal. Lots of excitement. So right here, this is <laughs> this is our view of the jettisoned hot stage. Uh, as we mentioned, this is a temporary fix to help uh, reduce the weight of the booster. And we are expecting that landing burn here. And we will be we will be exciting, igniting 13 engines. And this is a great view on your left-hand side is a view, is three views from the booster and your right-hand side a view from the ship. And you can see those grid fins on your left-hand screen rotating and turning to guide the booster. And there's that landing burn. That landing burn just begun. And you can see the water below. successful splashdown of the super heavy booster. Loved seeing it just tip over <laughs> into the water before <laughs> losing that footage. Now the next milestone is coming up in about under a minute. The ship is going to shut off its Raptor engines, ship engine cut at, off. which we see right there. As we mentioned uh, before, today's test flight is not an orbital flight, but rather one that demonstrates ship, the Starship's orbital capability. So right now we are under power with just the three center Raptor engines. Expecting those, and just there we can see that those have also successfully cut off. Re-entry. <laughs> exactly. Uh, as with Flight 3, Starlink may enable us to talk with the ship through re-entry with no communication blackout. Uh, we are still testing Starlink during this phase of flight, so of course nothing is certain. Expect a lost signal. Cape Canaveral. You'll see payloads once they're deployed, so a lot more exciting stuff coming up in the future. But right now, we're getting closer to re-entry. We are moving at hypersonic speeds, more than five times the speed of sound. We're going to see that plasma start to build, so can't just see coming up. Yeah, as you can see, with that view on your screen again, high depth approach by Starlink, you can see the plasma begins to build as the ship is getting closer to the Earth's atmosphere. Now, how, let's talk a little bit about how Earth will survive re-entry, hopefully, and control itself. Exactly, we've been talking about this this entire flight test. There's 80,000 hexagonal ceramic tiles surrounding the bottom portion of the Earth-based satellite ship. Okay, 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 okay. Great call-off there. Now, during atmospheric re-entry, vehicles want to see temperatures as high as 2600 degrees Fahrenheit, or over 1400 degrees Celsius. So those tiles are there to help protect the vehicle from extreme heat. Yeah, and the flaps will help control it. Now, one noticeable difference I see immediately: uh, those flaps are not moving as much as they were on flight three. So that is a great sign, right? We had uh, unplanned loss of uh, roll control on flight three, so we added some additional structures. We can see that uh, they're working well, and we have a much stable, more stable fuel. So these flaps are onto at the top and to at the bottom. Uh, they're made out of stainless steel, and uh, yeah, they, they help steer, steer the ship, which as you can see, plasma continue to build. Uh, now, if the ship survives re-entry, it will have to perform a flight maneuver, uh, as well as a landing burn. We saw this demonstrated a couple in a couple of high-altitude flight tests back in like 2020, 
All right, great news there, telling us that this is basically the hottest point uh, that Starship should get uh, during its reentry. Now, the heat shield is working the atmosphere for some like free braking. Okay, the, the atmosphere is helping to slow the Starship down. Yeah, exactly. We're not using any engines or thrust to slow the vehicle down. Exactly, what engines. We're just using the atmosphere and those heat shield tiles protecting the vehicle as it's coming through that high heat temperature. Yeah, now, this is another one of those moments that we have been waiting for. Right now, the ship is currently reentering the Earth's atmosphere, and by all looks and all callouts, we're hearing on the net it is doing pretty well. Now, we do not plan to recover the spacecraft today, but rapid and reusable, excuse me, rapid and reliable reusability is the ultimate goal. Just pausing to just take in this incredible new and different view that we're seeing. We did get a similar view in Flight 3. Uh, again, the vehicle did lose a little bit of its control, attitude control, um, and this is a very stable view. This is great. This is exactly what we want, and we are hearing that we're getting expected call outs. You know, it's incredible to look at this photo and wonder wait, is it real? Is it frozen? Uh, you know, we can see the. Yeah, so I was just going to say. Oh, that is great news. Uh, the temperature is no longer building. Um, but I'm saying, like, we have a little bit of indication there. We can see that streaking occurring that occurs and tells us this is, this is indeed a, a true view. So once again, we're looking basically through the plasma that is building up through or around the exterior of the ship. And I still cannot get over it. We are getting a live view of re entry right now, live on your screen. Again, we've said this over and over, but all thanks to Starlink. We are able to use Starlink in space, which we're getting this incredible data, and not only just the, the data from the sensors, we're getting a live imagery of what is actually happening. Which is great. We've never been able to do um, live before. Right now, just a quick um, uh, future outlook here. So, in about uh, let's see, at T plus about one hour and two minutes, we should hear a call out for entry transonic. That means that the ship is going near the speed of sound. And then about a minute after that, we'll hear another call out saying entry subsonic, meaning that the ship is going below the speed of sound. So, these are all continued indications that uh, the atmosphere, right as the ship comes back down, is getting through the, the, the more dense part of the atmosphere, and the atmosphere is helping to push against the vehicle, and the shields are protecting the vehicle during this high heat period. Yeah, okay, Jesse, we're starting to see as the atmosphere gets denser, you're starting to see a few more particles make an appearance in the plasma there. You can see you're looking down at the aft end of the ship in the top left, and you're, you're seeing essentially the flame build as we go through re-entry. Um, you can hear the call-outs, they're tracking things like temperatures in the nose cone, and those uh, were right where we modeled them to be, which is really cool to see and to see in real time. Uh, but we're coming up, we're about 67 kilometers in altitude. Our last signal of the ship on flight 3 was at 65, so we should be making it past that point shortly. Obviously, as you guys find out, we're in much better control this time as we re-entered in the right attitude, uh, and our flaps have been steering away so far. Uh, once we get through transonic, that's when you've got essentially different areas around the vehicle where the air is either moving faster or slower than the speed of sound. We'll eventually get to uh, subsonic, which we have some experience with, we did our subworld campaign. Uh, and Get down to its terminal velocity as it's floating down uh, to the water that's just about 200 miles an hour. So uh, we are hearing that we're starting to chill some of the engines as we are we make it all the way down the water. So we're going to attempt to land and burn, but still, still a ways to go. We're about 64 kilometers in altitude right now. We made it through what's expected to be the peak heating, but now we're going to start encountering increased pressures as the atmosphere gets thicker and thicker. So we're 63 kilometers, so we already made it farther than we did on our last flight when that last signal was coming at 65 kilometers. So again, what we're really looking at here is the performance of the heat shield and the flaps of the seals and the flaps. There's just a whole bunch of different areas that we're keeping a really close eye on as we re-enter. So it's a good trajectory. It looks like we're still on a good trajectory. If you're seeing little camera moves, that's the flap moving as it continues to maintain uh, the attitude of the vehicle as it re-enters. I mean, not just camera use, but we've got sensors inside the ship. We've got those sensors down at the very aft end of the vehicle where we point out we've got some intentionally missing tiles. We've got some sensors looking at just how hot it's getting around there. We intentionally put those in, essentially the least critical part of the heat shield, uh, where if you had any kind of breach, it would be great for usability, but would be critical for actual uh, making it through the entry into the landing. 58 kilometers, we're continuing to descend. And right now, we are, we are over the Indian Ocean. We're actually uh, getting closer and closer to that expected splashdown point, which is just to the uh, off the northwest corner of Australia. If you keep, you keep an eye on our speed, the speed is dropping. We're hitting the thicker part of the atmosphere now, the speed's going to start dropping precipitously. We're going to start getting to, to transonic pretty soon, and then after that we'll get into subsonic, where we're moving less than the speed of sound, but wow, what a light show so far. Again, this camera view is looking right at one of the, the forward flaps. And we're, we're strategically putting some cameras around the vehicle to just look at the, the different areas. Uh, so we got the flaps starting to come apart a little. Yeah, it's a little bit of burn through there. We can see pieces of the vehicle flying off. What a show it has been. It's been like watching yourself or something. <laughs> this is wild to see this, but the ship is still coming down. It's incredible to see. How far did that go? That is the question. Keep your eye on the altitude in the bottom right hand corner. We're at 54 kilometers right now. Now, ultimately, the data is available today. We've been saying it multiple times. We're, the, you know, our teams are, are sitting, uh, we're doing this data live, learning where the hotspots are. As you can see, there's a hotspot there with the flaps, um, and learning how we can improve this design. The goal is to get as far through this high, uh, this high heat re-entry as possible. Ideally, we'd love to make it all the way down and just on that, uh, that landing burn and flipping work. But we don't get that far today. We will see. Again, this is a test, and we are gathering as much data as possible. Visual data, as well, as you can see here, we are getting a lot of debris covering the camera screen, but we can still see some of those sparks and flames from the high heat as ship is making its way back down to Earth. Ship now at 50 kilometers and closing. The good news is we still got almost like that camera lens just cracked. <laughs> it's safe to say, just getting a little beat up, but that's to be expected on a test flight. We are still learning how to improve the ship for total survival and recovery of the high heat re-entry. I'm honestly impressed that we're still getting this live view despite how much debris is coming off this lot right now. <laughs> that we got is good news. And I think I just, I apologize. <laughs> Look at that, we are still going. And the teams here at SpaceX are excited, as you can tell by the cheering behind us. We're still a sizable crowd here at Mission Control Center, Hawthorne. A splashdown is expected in just about four minutes from now. We're still moving. We still have live views. Start with the question. Okay, good news. The external pressures are dropping. The question is, how much is the ship is left? <laughs> we can't really tell. We can still see uh, some of that particulate coming off. Um, and unfortunately, we do have a crashed camera lens. But for any photographers out there and uh, videographers, we know that's, that's part of the case sometimes. Yeah, you can see that the speed is rapidly slowing down. That's actually really great news for us. We want the vehicle to be slowing down before it splashes down into the ocean. That'll help set us up for that flip maneuver engines first down into the water. Exactly. So we have seen this flip maneuver demonstrated on previous high altitudes like this, like uh, cylinder eight. Oh, more views. Uh, or, excuse, I should say more light coming through the view that we have through that uh, cracked and, and dirty lens there. Um, but yeah, so we're hoping that this flip maneuver maybe we can pull off. Um, as soon as we get this back, if we can get them, uh, if the ship is still around, we will bring it back. Maximum dynamic pressure. That is great news. Maximum dynamic pressure being the moment in which the vehicle experiences the greatest amount of uh, aerodynamic pressure. Speed still dropping now at 37 kilometers above the ocean. Just like three, right. And telemetry, that does tell us that ship is still doing okay, at least. And there we got that live view back. <laughs> the crowd very excited to see that view, despite not being able to see very much. <laughs> the fact that it's there tells us the ship is still alive. Yes, and collecting now. data,
Um, I, I thought maybe it might clear up. It is a little bit. Um, now at T plus one hour, three minutes and 13 seconds into Starship Flight 4, hoping that the ship can hang on. It's probably <laughs> potentially hanging on by a couple of bolts and threads, uh, but it's still going, and that is excellent news. That deceleration is looking incredible. We're about to go under 1,000 kilometers per hour. Yeah. Starship and is at 20 kilometers altitude. Now, keep in mind that even though we can't see anything, uh, the, the, pay, the, data, the data itself is what we really uh, are... Starship are, is subsonic. Subsonic, they're telling us it's traveling below the speed of sound. That movement means the flaps are actuating. I think we can see something. This is a nail biter. <laughs> But we are, uh, unfortunately, we can't see through the through the, the, the lens, but we're still getting the feed. Uh, Starship is now uh, 11 kilometers over the ocean. All this data is incredibly important. Even if, uh, you know, it breaks up right now. Okay, we can see that flap actuating through the glass. Starship is passing through 10 kilometers altitude. Okay, the next milestone will be initiation of the flip maneuver and landing burn. Keep an eye on the bottom right corner of your screen for those three center engines to relight. They will gimbal or uh, angle so that the ship flips itself back up vertical and hopefully lands in a vertical position. And the crowd is very excited to get this view of that flap still maneuvering. Starship is passing through five kilometers altitude. This is incredible. We're getting very close to splashdown. These fireflies are such a good <laughs> sign of life right now. <laughs> we wish we could see more, but we'll take it. Starship is at two kilometers altitude, terminal velocity. Landing wing startup for Starship. All right, good news there. Nominal to look at Landing board startup. Starship is in landing board. Landing board shipping. The, the landing bird shutdown was commanded. 